Hello all. In this session, we are going to cover Cloud CCL, Cloud Customer Certification Lab. Basically, it's a web-based service that allows customer to create their own virtualized model of their production network to validate their special CLI knobs or specific configuration or software features before implementing into their production network. By the way, I am Mahesh Subramanyam from Juniper Strategic Delivery Team. With me, Krishna also available here, who is the technical lead for Cloud CCL platform. Okay, let me go to the second slide. Uh, in this session, we segregate into five parts. One is the Cloud CCL overview, where we are going to explain the key difference between the physical customer certification lab and the cloud certification lab. And second part going to be the high level architecture of this platform. In fact, we have two main pillars. One is the graphical topology editor and the automation framework. And the third part going to be the user workflow. It's a typical user workflow at any given customer if how they are going to log into this portal with a click of a button anywhere from the internet and how they are going to run the test suites and extract the results. And fourth part going to be the quick demo which will showcase how easy the customer can leverage this product to drag and drop the VMX, VSRF and any other platform to build their production test environment and test their own features and special CLI knobs. And a fifth part, which is the last one, we showcase a lot of useful links, uh, which will explain the solution brief of this Cloud CCL platform and service description. If in case customer is interested in this product, we have a SKU details as well. Uh, to customer can subscribe this product and use for their production network test environment. With the given fact, now I'm going to hand over to Krishna, who's going to deep dive on each and every section. And also, if you have any question, please pop up in the window. Thank you. Krishna, stage is yours. Thank you, thank you, Mahesh. Um, so, so we are going to see about the cloud CCL. Uh, overview of uh, the different components it has and then uh, we'll move on to the architecture and demo later. So Cloud CCL is a, is a web-based platform. Uh, it's hosted um, securely and privately in Juniper data center and is available over internet. So there is no need for your customer to install any VPN solution for accessing this platform. Um, it, it, it provides you with a GUI-based topology editor which, uh, uh, which is pretty intuitive. Um, it, it allows you to drag and drop the VNFs that you want into the uh, topology editor, and then you can build your topology, virtual topology in, uh, in minutes. Uh, so we have support for uh, Juniper virtual products like VMX, VSRX, and other applications like Space, Northstar, JSA. And uh, not just that, we also have, we also support VXIA and Spirant. And um, so all of these uh, come as a package with Cloud CCL. So when, you, when your customer subscribes for Cloud CCL, uh, they would be getting access to the platform um, as, well as, the, uh, as well as these products uh, with no additional licensing fees. So, uh, and, uh, and of course, it, it, it's a pay-as-you-go model um, they, uh, with a minimum of 25 VNFs and a maximum of 100 VNFs. So you can, you can either subscribe to Cloud CCL uh, annually or monthly. Uh, it's, it's going to be uh, through the standard SKU, um, which we are going to uh, showcase in our in our uh, links uh, slide later on. And of course, this also has uh, open source based automation framework. Uh, this is a full blown test automation uh, framework that that is based on robot, Python, Ansible, and Jenkins, uh, which you get access to uh, along with this, along with your subscription. And this this also has um, sample test scripts included. Um, which which you can make use of uh, that that can help you in your day to day automation like backup config restore load config uh, upgrade router etc. And then you can also import your existing uh, test scripts which uh, which could be based on robot and Python uh, into this environment and you can execute uh, them against the virtual topology. Uh, now moving on to uh, the architecture slide. Um, so Cloud CCL, as Mahesh pointed out earlier, you know, it has got two main uh, components or aspects uh, in the form of graphical topology editor and the open source based automation framework. Um, so um, as I said before, the topology editor is where you design and build your topology. And uh, this is where you access all the VNFs, um, um, the Ixia, Spiron, VMX, Genospace, etc. And then the automation framework would help you in your day to day automation as well as 
testing the pre-production context, automating all that uh, in the virtual uh, cloud CCL environment. So we have a web interface overarching these two components. Um, essentially, um, you don't need a CLA or a terminal software to access uh, any of these components. So do you use the juniper.net microsite to log into cloud CCL. Uh, again, through uh, through the internet, and then you access all these VNFs uh, once they are available in your uh, sandbox through the uh, through the web GUI, and the same applies to accessing the test orchestrator or the automation engine or the centralized repository. So web interface is uh, is there all over in Cloud CCL, and, uh, and a little bit on the test automation framework. So we have uh, uh, different different components uh, that constitutes the framework. We have the orchestrator. Uh, test orchestrator where you execute these scripts and uh, view the results, log files, etc. That's uh, based on open source Jenkins CACD platform. And we have the automation engine and um, the uh, based on robot Python and Ansible. And we have the GitLab based centralized repository, which allows you to uh, import your test scripts into Cloud CCL. And this is where you'll find the um, existing uh, existing sample scripts that we are providing with Cloud CCL subscription. And uh, so this this is probably uh, uh, where you can store your test cases, configuration, automation scripts, test reports, etc. Here. Um, and this in this slide, uh, we just want to show you a bit of an animation uh, that visually depict, depicts a typical Cloud CCL uh, user workflow. Uh, what a customer would do when he logs into Cloud CCL web UI. So the first thing he would do is design and build the topology, load config and uh, use the GitLab repository to manage test cases or create uh, or use the existing test scripts and execute those scripts from the uh, Jenkins-based orchestrator, uh, view the results, analyze the result log files to the result dashboard, and track any result trends, uh, et cetera, from the report dashboard. So uh, now we are on to the demo. Um, so before I uh, show you the Cloud CCL web UI, just want to uh, give a clear picture on what the demo is going to be. Um, so uh, I've segregated this into two parts. Um, uh, the first uh, first demo would be to uh, introduce you to Cloud CCL platform, the landing page, which we have hosted in Juniper.net uh, website. And I, I'll be quickly showing you the graphical topology editor where I'm going to design and build the topology and in the demo too, I'm going to uh, show you a topology that I've already built, uh, which is based on miniature core niche. Uh, and I'm also going to execute a couple of automated test cases uh, using the Cloud CCL orchestrator. And I'm going to show you the result trends, the result dashboard, the report dashboard, etc. Now so moving on to the demo, I'm going to open up my browser. I'm going to uh, navigate into the Cloud CCL URL. So uh, this is the URL uh, you would want to type into cloudccl.juniper.net. As I said, the, the Cloud CCL platform is available over the internet, and and we have integrated Juniper single sign-on uh, with this uh, platform. So uh, when you type in cloudccl.juniper.net, this is the page that you want to get. Uh, you can use the sign-in button to uh, sign in using your Juniper credentials. I'm going to use my Juniper credential here. We'll log in. Once you're logged into the portal, uh, assume that you have, you have an active subscription for Cloud CCL. This is how it's going to look like. Uh, you've got a couple uh, video tutorials here. which shows you how to create a topology, uh, how to access the VNFs, how to add automation, etc. And then the standard uh, footer, which has FAQs, um, a literature on the resources that we support today, and then a contact us in terms and conditions for your producer. Um, so this said, I'm not going to uh, spend much time on the portal itself. Um, uh, I'm going to click on this, uh, which takes me to the graphical topology editor um, uh, in Cloud CCL. Okay. So I'm logged in now to the Cloud CCL platform or the graphical topology editor. You see uh, the blueprints and sandboxes. So blueprints are essentially uh, uh, network topology diagrams or, or the designs. And when you when you actually reserve that, it comes under sandboxes. So I'm going to quickly show you the blueprints part, uh, how to create a blueprint with the existing templates that we're providing with, and uh, how to reserve that, and then uh, get, get access your sandbox thereon. Click on create blueprint here, and then you're presented with these templates. 
Um, there are, these are uh, templates that we are providing uh, you basically for ease of use. Um, so for instance, you want to try out an XCI template, uh, you have the blueprint, uh, the, the topology editor is going to be pre-populated with the VM access, VXCI and the automation VM. And uh, say if you want to uh, try uh, with Spirant, the, the same applies. We will, the, the graphical topology editor will have VMX, Vspirant, and the automation VM. And say if you don't want any of that, start, that's hard. You want to start off in a new canvas. You can click on uh, the empty blueprint here. So uh, and then this, and then if you have the, if you, if you want the automation to be enabled in your topology, you can click on the automation template, and your canvas will be just pre-populated with the automation VM and the GitLab server. So uh, for, the, uh, for this demo, I'm going to choose the automation template. Just click on that. It's going to prepare the canvas for me. Um, and as I said before, uh, you have these two uh, resources pre-populated. So these are the automation uh, key components of the automation, the automation VM, the GitLab server. And then um, I'm going to I'm going to be building my topology on top of it. So you can uh, provide a name if you want. And then click on the abstract function here, which opens up all the resources that we that we are supporting today, um, starting from CentOS, to Ixia, uh, JSA, Space, Spire, and VMX, and v, uh, VSRX, and so on. So for the purpose of the demo, I'm, I'm planning to create a simple uh, VMX to VMX and a, a Spirant topology. Um, all I need to do is drag and drop these resources onto the canvas here. So I'm going to drag and drop the VMX 17.31 here. Another VMX. Then the Spirant ETC port. Maybe another Spirant port. And of course, I need a GUI and the lab server for accessing uh, these ports. Okay. So once you have uh, enough number of VNFs available for you to design the for you to build the topology, next thing you would want to do is create links between these two resources. So for which um, hover over the resource that you want to um, that you want to create a link with. Click on the create connect, connect button here and click on the end device. And you'll be presented with the code dialogs. Uh, you can choose up to eight ports between um, these two resources. So which means to say you can create eight interface links between a VMX and a VSRX. So you can choose any any of the port uh, port pads you want. Click on click on that and add and save. So this is going to create a virtual link between um, these two resources that I have uh, uh, dragged and dropped into the canvas. The same way, if you want to create a link between the Spiron port and the VMX, uh, hover over the Spiron resource here, click on Create Connection, and click on the end device, which is the VMX one, and uh, you'll be presented with one Spiron port and the remaining seven ports here in the right hand side. You can choose any of the ports that you want. Click on Add, so that before, and save. Right. Same, I'm going to quickly create a link between this parent and the VMX. Same process, no change. Okay. So once you're done designing your topology, um, you, you would want to obviously uh, build this topology and access these VNFs and, and, and obviously then load your configs, run your test cases, etc. So the next thing which you, you would want to do is click on the reserve button here. This is going to create your build your topology uh, based on the blueprint that you have created. And by default, you can by default the schedule is for four weeks. So which means to say this topology will be active for another month. If you want to uh, um, create a topology for a couple of days, you can just click on schedule and say I want to run it for just a week or maybe a couple of days. I can choose a schedule. I, if you want, you can change the description here. And then click on reserve, right? So this is going to build your topology uh, right in front of you. You're going to see all the VNFs spinning up. And then once your topology is built up, uh, depending on the complexity of the topology, it's going to take anywhere between 10 to 30 minutes. Uh, you will, you will, uh, you will be able to uh, access all these VNFs from the dev, from the dev lead. So, uh, so I, I just, uh, built a topology, built this topology and you see this hatch. Uh, link here, which this shows that the topology is being set up. 
and you see this status here set up and it's it, it's it, it says it is estimated to end in nine minutes right so once this topology is set up you will be able to access all these resources uh, from the web GUI and then you can run your script run your automation scripts load your context etc so we are not going to wait until this topology is going to be complete so this is just to show you uh, how to create uh, how to design and build your topology uh, I'm moving on to my demo too as I planned earlier um, where I'm going to show you a core edge prototype uh, um, topology that I have built for this demo. Uh, I'm going to show you how to access the VMFs and uh, I'm going to cover quickly the uh, aspects of automation, uh, etc. So uh, if you can remember, um, there, there are two things, blueprints and sandboxes. So if you want to find uh, find your topology which is already built, you should go to the sandboxes. Just click on that and it takes me to the sandbox dashboard page. Um, you, these are the number of different uh, per demo uh, uh, topologies I have built. Um, but for this demo, I'm going to take uh, the Core Edge prototype uh, topology. So this is so this this Core Edge uh, uh, as a prototype, as the name suggests, is based on uh, Core Edge model. You have four four routers, two edge routers here, and then we have the Spider ports pumping in traffic uh, from these two ends. And of course, uh, we also have the uh, Juno space uh, application here, and then the automation resources, the the Git server, and the automation. Here. Right. So this is how your topo a topology looks like when it is built. You see the active status here. It it shows how many days, uh, months, or hours it is going to be active for, and then you see all the green icons here that shows uh, the topology has been built and these VNFs are accessible. So uh, I'll quickly take you uh, through the. Uh, uh, navigation. So if you want to access this VMX, just hover over the resource, click on options, and then you are presented with these three different options. You can choose any of any of these if you want. Uh, I, for the for the sake of the demo, uh, I'll choose SSH uh, because that's a popular option to log into a VNF. I click on SSH. Uh, so this creates an SSH in browser, right? So you don't need a terminal software. To log into uh, these resources. Of course, you are, you are free to do that, but uh, for quickly checking a config or quickly loading a config, which is not very big, you can choose this option uh, wherein it creates an SSH session right in front of you in the browser. So as you can see, I'm already logged in uh, to the router, and then I can I can type any CLI, you know, CLI that I want, and then this is going to uh, show the result of that CLI. And of course, uh, you can load any uh, uh, configs that you want. If it is it's not uh, not that very complex, you can uh, quickly log into this session and then you can load them um, as you please. So I'm going back to the sandboxes. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going back to my Coronet project sandbox. Um, I'm going to quickly show you how to access the Spire and GUI um, because that is obviously needed for uh, access uh, uh, configuring the Spire and ports. Um, the same way over over the resource. Click on options and choose the RDP here, and then it presents you with this uh, page. I'm going to minimize this. Okay, so I, the first time you log into this uh, 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 Spiren VM, you're going to see the Spiren Test Center Session Manager, uh, where the session is already pre-created for you because uh, you have the Spiren Lab Server and the Spiren GUI included in your topology. Uh, it automatically knows how many ports the, you have reserved in your topology and it's going to uh, uh, present you with that. So all you need to do is log into this VM and then click on connect and it's going to open up the uh, Spider and Test Station Manager where you can configure um, configure the ports that you have uh, created in your topology. So this set, uh, I'm not going to cover the kind of spider and configuration part. I'm going back to the um, uh, topology that I have, uh, was demoing with. Um, so this time I'm going to show you the automation component. So, uh, um, the, so um, as I said in the agenda, I covered the accessing the VNFs part, uh, accessing the spider and GUI part, and then the, the last thing which I want to show you is the automation uh, capability of Cloud CCL. So uh, as we showed in our slides, uh, we have the GitLab server, the centralized repository where uh, you can store your test scripts, test cases that you want. You, know, you can import it from your test environment. And this is also the place where you find uh, the sample test automation scripts that uh, we have included uh, along with CloudCCL. 
So I'm going to uh, access that. Again, accessing it's going to be uh, similar to uh, how you access a VMX in Spider and hover over the resource, click on options and click on HTTPS. And it's going to ask for a username. I have a demo username created. Click on sign in. It's going to take me to this uh, dashboard page, projects dashboard page, where, I'm, uh, where I see these two uh, projects pretty created for me. So uh, one is the config backup and other the uh, specimen test scripts. So this is the sample test scripts project that I uh, mentioned um, uh, this couple of minutes back. So this is where you will find uh, the basic test scripts uh, written in Ansible, which helps you in your backup, restore config, load config, uh, install demos, etc. And this also has a robot Python based uh, test suite, uh, which exercises protocols like RSVP, ISIS, MPLS, etc., which you can use as your starting point. And the config backup project is where your your configs, your topology configs are going to be stored in the form of a tzip file. Um, uh, later in the demo, uh, uh, to be precise, the next next thing which I want to show in the demo is the uh, Cloud CCL Orchestrator, the Jenkins platform. I'm going to uh, show you how to uh, execute a couple of these uh, test scripts uh, uh, from the UI. So all your topology configs, including the router and the tester configs, are um, are created as a tarball. And then it is pushed onto this uh, repository, uh, or, or rather the project. So even if something happens to your topology, uh, or uh, or maybe you have messed up with the config, or maybe config has been overwritten and you cannot get it back, uh, you have you have backup of all your configs uh, centrally stored here. And this GitLab server is um, is away from your topology in the sense that it doesn't have any dependency on your topology per se. Even though you see this icon, uh, this is merely provided uh, for ease of use and for ease of accessing this link from the, from within the topology. So this this server, this GitLab server is uh, is away from your topology. So even if something happens, uh, your configs are going to be safe. Um, uh, they're going to be stored here. You can always restore it back onto your, uh, onto your topology again. So this said, uh, uh, and I also want to let you know that you know, using the new project um, uh, function here, you can create any number of projects that you want, and you can import your test scripts from your from your testing environment, and then execute those scripts uh, through the uh, Cloud CCL orchestrator against the virtual topology. And uh, and the lab, uh, and I also want to emphasize that this is a GitLab server and not GitHub. So um, quite often people get confused with GitHub and GitLab. And GitHub is something which is public. It is a public repository, and uh, obviously this is not uh, this is not that. So this is GitLab, and is again privately hosted by uh, Cloud CCL team in the Juniper data center. And all the configs that you see here, all the test scripts, are going to be privately stored here. You are not going to lose any of this, uh, and it's going to be active until your Cloud CCL subscription is active. Call. Um, I'm going back to my topology, the demo topology. I'm, I'm going to show you the uh, uh, Cloud CCL orchestrator. So for which uh, hover over the uh, resource CCL automation VM. And then again, so this is based on Ubuntu environment where you have, uh, where you have those um, packages like um, Python, Robot, Ansible are pre-installed. You can either SSH and go into that. So I'm going to skip that part, which is similar to what I've uh, shown you before. I'm going to click on HTTP URL, which is going to present you with the Cloud CCL orchestrator. So click on that, and then it opens up the uh, Jenkins dashboard. Um, the, we call it the Cloud CCL orchestrator because this is where you execute your test scripts from. Uh, here again, you see these two uh, folders be created, the test automation and the provisioning automation part. Uh, so under the provisioning automation, you will see... Uh, uh, the backup config, restore config, load, load config, and install. You know, so all of these are going to be useful in one way or the other in your day-to-day -day automations. Obviously, you will, you will need load configs once your topology is built, and then if you want to uh, test upgrade of any routers, you can you can use install Juno's job here. And the backup config and restore config, obviously, as I mentioned before, are going to be really useful. Um, uh, you know, if, if if something happens to your config, so you can always get it back. So I. We would suggest uh, running up a schedule on backup config. So we have we have we have given you uh, quite a bit of a detail on how to uh, backup how to run this backup config job auto automatically according to your time zone. Um, so this is the you, you can go through this by default. It's uh, configured to run every day at 12 a.m. 
uh, which you can obviously change, right? And you can all obviously run this uh, job on demand too, which is what I'm going to show you now. So click on build with parameters. So this is, uh, this presents you, uh, uh, the build with parameters is going to present you with these, uh, the parameters here, which are, which are all pre-populated, the Git server, Git username and password, etc. So all you need to do is hit build and it's going to start a backup config job uh, where it's going to take a backup of all your configs, including your tester and router. And it's going to create a tarball and it's going to push it onto the Git repository that I showed you a couple of minutes back in the GitLab server, right? And um, obviously uh, you can uh, uh, view the console output from here. Just click on this dialog. And click on console output. This this page is going to ref, going to be refreshed um, uh, as and when you uh, see updates from this job, right? As you can see here, uh, it has completed uh, taking a backup of all the VMXs, the six VMXs that I have in the topology, and then it has um, taken a backup of the Spider tool. And then once the job is complete, you will see the finished success state, and then you can find the uh, uh, config backup tarball in the GitLab server. So the same way. Uh, um, I'm going back to the provisioning automation route. The same way you can run the restore config. Uh, just click on build with parameters and provide the config backup file name. So this is the file name that you will find uh, from the GitLab server. Just uh, copy paste the name of the file uh, in this dialog and then hit build. And it's going to untar all the contents from your TGZ file, um, backup file, and it's going to push push all those configs onto your routers and the topology. So this said, um, I'm going back to the Jenkins homepage. Uh, I'll go into the test automation component. So I just covered the provisioning automation part, the backup, restore, install, and a few others. I'm going to um, click on the test automation. I'm going to show you how a robot Python test suite, uh, test automation suite uh, look like. Um, uh, how, 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 I mean, what, what does it make to... Uh, um, run execute the test suite from Jenkins and uh, and what kind of test results test report uh, you can uh, see from the Jenkins UI. So uh, click on the, the job here and you are presented with this uh, job dashboard page. Of course, in the LHS you see the standard Jenkins icons here built with parameters. So this is the same as what I showed you before. Just click on this and then it launches the test suite job. So this is uh, you can use this test suite as a starting point of your uh, robot Python test automation journey, right? So this is this this is one test suite which has um, uh, which has test cases for RSVP, MPLS, ISIS, and BGP, and then you can mix and match any of these test cases that you want um, based on your topology. Obviously, you will not have all these protocols configured in your topology, but you can take any of these that you, you might you might need, right? So uh, this is the job dashboard page, and for a much detailed view of uh, of this test suite, just click on browse results. It's going to uh, present you with these two uh, result trends graph. Uh, it's going to show you the historical information too here. And the number four is the latest build and uh, where, where about 10 test cases passed and four, four of them failed. And the three and two, so many test cases passed and failed. So this is going to give a clear picture of how your test suite has performed over the, over the time and over the period. So how, how was it? Uh, running this test case yesterday, day before, uh, last month, and how was it running today? So it gives you a clear picture uh, in the form of a graph. And then, of course, you can spot regression early on in your test cycle. If something fails, uh, fails in the, in, the, in the latest runs, and then probably there is an issue with the config, or maybe there is an issue with the with the, uh, with the test case, robot test case, or you, you, can, you can actually reverse engineer uh, your issues based on these test result trends. Okay. So in, in the bottom, you see the failed test cases. It shows these failed test cases of the current run. Uh, you can expand this and it shows you a high level error message on why it failed, et cetera. So this, for instance, the check MPLS interface has failed on the VMX 179. So this is one of the VMXs that, uh, that I have in my topology. And this particular test case has failed there. Just click on that and then it paints you this result trend and duration trend graph specifically for this uh, test case, right? So as you can see, um, uh, this check MPLS interface test has failed in the current run, but it has passed in the previous runs, right? So this is a clear case of a regression. So for some reason, um, maybe there is a config change in your router. Uh, something has caused this regression, and uh, the reason why uh, it has passed in all the previous runs, but it has failed now. So this way, you can... Reverse engineer, you can go back, you can backtrack all your failed test cases 
and find out the culprit, find out if there is an issue with the config or maybe uh, maybe an issue with the robot test case, etc. So this kind of gives you this this dashboard in the Jenkins gives you a very high level picture as well as a low level picture of your test suite uh, of your test execution. So I'm going back to the uh, dashboard page and then I want to show you the report and the log HTML file. So these are robot based outputs and uh, Jenkins uh, by default it knows how to connect to GitLab and how it also knows how to parse the robot results. Uh, it presents you uh, all these report log files from the web GUI. So with minimal need for any terminal software or such, you don't need to log into uh, the cloud, the automation VM uh, for uh, for looking at the log files, etc. All of these are captured through the web GUI. Just click on the report HTML. It's going to uh, give you a high level statistics of how many test cases passed, how many test cases failed, etc. It's going to, so this time it's going to give you. Um, uh, a much granular detail on a much granular level. Uh, it shows you uh, the different uh, different uh, statistics by tag. Uh, these are the different tags that I created. These are custom tags um, that are, that I've created in my test suite. It shows you in the sanity test suite out of four, uh, three pass, one fail, and in the uh, and in the other test uh, test suites like MPLS out of three, two pass, one fail, etc. Right. So I'm going to click on any of these uh, uh, test. Uh, test with a sanity or MPLS is going to present you with um, the next level of details, right? The sanity, the check Genos version has failed and the other test cases have passed. Just click on check Genos version. It takes you to the actual log file. It's going to show you um, the CLI that, that was running uh, against your router. It shows you the output, the router has emitted. And then finally it shows you that the test case has failed because uh, because expected value was the something else than the obtained value right so this is something i've mandated in my test case um and those th so this is how uh, you go about um analyzing your log files and, and then you also give uh, get a high level report as well as a low level log file so both engineers and managers can um make sense out of the uh, out of the results or reports that come out of uh, the jenkins platform so this concludes a demo of cloud ccl uh, now i'm going back to my slide deck just want to present you uh, the useful link slide and um, so these are a couple of urls um, that you can navigate to for getting more information on cloud ccl and um, you, if you have any questions you do reach out to cloud ccl assist the, the alias you that you see here on the in this window and also we have a SKU details. Uh, uh, with a click of the link, you can come to know the SKU details. I can briefly explain here. There is an annual SKU for 50 VNFs and monthly SKUs for 25 and 50 VNFs. And uh, if you have any more questions, please contact us and we are happy to help you. And moreover, we are happy to give a demo to our team as well as the custom team as well. And uh, thank you and thank you all.